With each generation, the Volkswagen Golf GTI becomes more polished, but not every evolution of this Gran Turismo Inezion or GTI model has proved to be a real step forward. This Mark 8 model, though, might be combining new technology with advanced chassis dynamics, plus a little of the original GTI DNA still remains. Sounds promising. Before Volkswagen dreamed up the Golf GTI, there was no such thing as a hot hatchback. Now the phrase has entered everyday parlance and virtually any manufacturer that has a hatchback also has a hot one, or a warm one at the very least. It was 1976 when the original version of this car was born, and since then, through seven generations and with the help of countless imitators, it has brought performance, handling and fun to the masses on an unprecedented scale. The current Golf GTI is the Mark 8, and by rights, it should be the best yet. But does that mean best of breed or best in class? This car, after all, may define the hot hatch genre, but it's rarely been recognised as the most accomplished car in its sector. In fact, to be brutally honest, there have been some distinctly average Golf GTI models over the years. Uh, the low point was reached in the 90s with unremarkable third and fourth generation models. All that changed, though, in 2005 with a completely redeveloped fifth generation version which also lent its platform and most of its two litre turbo mechanicals to the slicker Mark VI design which followed in 2009. For the first time since the 70s and the early 80s a hot golf was a credible driver's choice once again. By 2013 though Volkswagen's iconic shopping rocket was beginning to be overtaken by a whole host of rivals all of whom offered more firepower and greater technical superiority. Another big step forward was called for and this car's predecessor, the seventh generation Golf GTI, uh, represented exactly that. Thanks to its extra power, its high-tech MQB platform and its more sophisticated suspension and steering. This 8th generation CD1 series model doesn't reinvent the modern era Golf GTI formula, but it does develop it quite a long way, as we're about to see. Will that be enough, though, to make this car the definitive choice in the segment? Let's find out. So, just how quick does a Golf GTI really need to be? Well, performance-wise, this car has to fit in a very tightly defined slot. It has to be faster than any of the conventional models in the range, of course, and it has to be able to duke it out with the rest of the hot hatch brigade. But it can't be so rapid that Volkswagen has nowhere to go with the even more focused 320 PS four-wheel drive Golf R uh, that over the last decade has superseded the GTI as this model lineup's flagship. Within these constraints, you think you're going to know exactly what you're going to get with the GTI, and yet, well, we'll get to that in a minute. It's certainly true that the engine stats are reasonably predictable, uh, as you'd expect they would be, given that the 2-litre TSI turbo power plant uh, beneath the bonnet here isn't that much different. It's 245 PS power output being exactly the same as that of the performance version of the previous model. That output, by the way, is more than twice as much as that generated by the original Mark I Golf GTI of 1976, but you might still think it doesn't sound very much given that all this car's direct rivals offer more. Uh, you will, after all, get 280 PS from the Hyundai i30N Performance and the Ford Focus ST, and 300 PS from the Renault Megane RS. Look closer, though, at what's on offer here, the light, strong, evolved version of the MQB platform that this Volkswagen sits on means that all those rivals are heavier, the Ford well over 100 kilos more portly, and that's one reason why the Golf can pretty much duplicate their performance, rest to 60 occupying uh, 6.3 seconds en route to 155 miles an hour. 
if that's really not fast enough and you can't quite stretch to a Golf R, then there's the GTI Club Sport model with 300 PS, which improves the acceleration stat to 5.6 seconds. But don't go looking there just yet, because in this standard form, this eighth generation Golf GTI has much more to offer than just straight line speed. To understand why, you'll need to understand what's changed here. Now, yes, as before, if you don't want manual transmission, there is the option of a DSG seven-speed paddle shift automatic gearbox, and that's the one we're trying here, but it's a different, sharper reacting shift-by-wire setup. And yes, as before, there is the must-have option of DCC, dynamic chassis control adaptive damping, but that has been completely reconfigured to be far more tunable. So uh, a keen owner could set up this GTI just as a race driver would set up their race car. On top of that, the previously optional XDS Plus electronically controlled locking front differential is now standard and it's been tuned to activate more effectively to improve mid-corner traction. Plus, Volkswagen has also added a completely new variable ratio steering rack with responses quickened by up to 7% for more incisive turn-in bite. Orchestrating all these elements is a new, faster acting and more comprehensive vehicle dynamics manager setup which oversees just about every dynamic variable and then alters the drivetrain, the suspension and the steering to get the nose into and around each turn more quickly and more safely. On top of that, uh, this car's sport suspension sees it ride 15 millimeters lower than the regular Golf. Uh, spring rates have been increased by 5% at the front and 15% at the rear and reworked rear axle kinematics and mountings have been adopted to create better lateral wheel control and chassis response. You might also want to know uh, that the old model's rear steel subframe has been replaced by an aluminium alloy one uh, that's been borrowed from that used by the previous generation GTI Club Sport S model. And of equal significance is the fact that a bigger master cylinder has made the brakes more powerful. All of this reflects the objectives recognized by Chief Engineer Jürgen Putschler's development team to improve low-speed agility, high-speed stability and driver feedback, which is broadly what you get once you seek out some twisting secondary road tarmac. You don't need to drive this car for more than half a mile on those kinds of roads to appreciate just how much of a difference all those changes have actually made, uh, and they're delivered to the accompaniment of a more determined verbal from the venerable EA888 series TSI engine. And that's perhaps due to the way that Volkswagen has revised the fuel injection system to benefit low rev responsiveness. Uh, the steering, which uh, really disappointed us on the previous generation model, that's now incisive and communicative. Uh, the brakes are brilliant. That Porsche developed DSG automatic is rifle crack quick through the ratios. Uh, body roll is brilliantly judged and dry weather grip at speeds through the turns seems almost endless. Yes, you have to pay a little for those pleasures. Uh, the ride is certainly much more firmly on the side of firm now, uh, hence the greater need to specify the optional dynamic chassis control system that we mentioned earlier, uh, which in the individual section of the driver profile selection driving mode system, uh, via a 15 position DCC slider adjuster allows you to be as extreme as you want with either the comfort or the sport drive settings. Now we've found uh, that a combination of the two works best here, dampers in comfort and everything else in sport. That is great for a combination of highway crews and fast secondaries, at which point we should also point out that this Golf GTI is still better than its rivals at not being a hot hatch, when not being a hot hatch is exactly what's required. Uh, you know, when the rain's pouring, uh, when a long highway trip is beckoning, uh, when urban driving is required, or when you simply can't be bothered with red mist modes. But when you are ready to drive this car in the way that it was designed to be driven, uh, this can be an astonishingly rapid point-to-point -point hot hatch. Now, we haven't tried this GTI on a circuit, but we reckon it had frightened some seriously high-powered machinery. Apparently, it proved to be a remarkable four seconds a lap quicker than its predecessor on Volkswagen's 2.06-mile Aero Lessian handling track.
and of course that makes it an impressive back road brawler. Uh, focus yourself, select your favourite flavour of sports setting and on the typical British B road and at typical British B road speeds this Golf GTI is ruthlessly good. Uh, the suspension is artfully tuned so as to not to continually upset the car or its traction control systems. Throw a Megane Renault Sport or maybe a Hyundai i30N down a fast twisting bumpy country lane and you're likely to emerge the other end a bit sweaty palms and with your adrenal glands waving the white flag. Now this Golf might arrive a tenth of a second or two behind but its driver will be serene, relaxed and with enough mental capacity in hand to enjoy a play on Radio 4 and therein lies the joy of this car. So, what do you think? Well, because with this eighth generation GTI model, styling chief Klaus Bischoff and his team had to keep basically the same structure as before, they were a little limited in how much could be done to fundamentally change the design of this car. It's now only offered in this single five-door hatch body style. Within those constraints, though, quite a lot has been done here, much of it aimed at creating a low visual center of gravity, and that's primarily achieved through the wide air intakes at the front and the striking shoulder line. You'll note the main differences here at the front where traditional model line touches, things like the classic GTI badging and the red strip across the radiator grill are blended into the lower and more menacing nose, which is a feature of this eighth generation Golf design. Full LED headlights fitted with the brand's intelligent IQ light matrix beams, they're standard and an LED strip in each headlamp mirrors the red grill line when the daytime running lights are activated or when the driver approaches with the key. You might find the wide lower grill and the fairy light LED front fog lamps to be a bit fussy, but there are some undeniably nice touches, like the way that the radiator grill illuminates a continuation of the headlamp LED daytime running light strip. Much less is different from the side, where you might pick up the fact that this variant rides 15 millimeters lower than a regular Golf. The profile is characterized by three elements. This GTI branded front wing signet badge, wide black lower side skirt sills featuring a splitter design similar to that found on race cars, and these unique 18 inch Richmond alloy wheels with red brake calipers, which can on request be upgraded to larger 19 inch rims. Those are the biggest ever fitted to a Golf GTI. As on the ordinary model, the side section's dominant base element is this C-pillar, which, as usual with the Golf, visually propels the vehicle's body forwards. Full LED tail lights feature at the rear, and the GTI lettering is now positioned centrally under the Volkswagen emblem. This hot hatch variant appears to be even flatter than less powerful Golf models, thanks to this roof spoiler, which extends significantly towards the rear and is painted in vehicle colour at the top, with glossy black at the bottom. Lower down, this sporty diffuser distinguishes this car from lesser Golfs, and in keeping with GTI tradition, this eighth generation model's exhaust system has one tailpipe on the left and one on the right. Of course, what's much more important is what you can't see, and that's the strong, stiff, and light MQB chassis, which has been carried over from the previous generation model, with a few updates to the structure that sits on it, uh, the adoption of aluminium for the rear subframe, for example. So a mixture of both old and new for the outside. Will the same be true for the cabin? Uh, designed, says Volkswagen, like a perfectly fitting pair of jeans. Let's see. Well, there's certainly plenty here that will be familiar to Golf GTI regulars, like the GTI Sport seats in Tartan with their black side bolsters and the three silver double spokes on the dished sport steering wheel. If this were a manual model, we'd have a dimpled golf ball style gear knob too. Despite this though, the overriding impression for loyal owners will probably be of just how different everything is here. Not really because of uh, freshly added detailed touches like the pulsating starter bar, uh, the extra steering wheel touch controls, or on this DSG Auto variant, this much shorter and stubbier drive selector. No, what's primarily different here lies with the adoption of what Volkswagen calls a completely digital cabin. 
as on an ordinary Golf, this comes courtesy of the brand's so-called InnoVision cockpit, which fuses a 10.25-inch digital instrument binnacle screen with a 10-inch centre dash screen. Uh, now, this may be an all-digital dashboard, but it is conservatively presented with separate capacitive buttons grouped in two shiny piano black clusters, one at either side of the steering wheel. Uh, there's certainly plenty to master on first acquaintance, but even if you are of a maturity that predates a digital age, uh, you probably won't feel it's completely beyond you. Let's start with this Digital Cockpit Pro instrument binnacle screen. Uh, the virtual gauges are embellished in this hot hatch model with stylized GTI branding and a smart honeycomb background. Uh, this display is a bit smaller than the virtual cockpit screen you'll get in a rival Audi S3, but it works in much the same way. A view button on the steering wheel here offers a choice of four graphic layouts. Now, mainly you'll use this one with two virtual dials, each centrally incorporating info, with the pair of gauges separated by a central data panel, all of it completely customizable. Uh, further clicks on the view button scroll you through three more themes. Uh, there is a full navigation map, uh, there is a safety graphic, and a digital speedo with, in each case, customizable data boxes provided on the left and the right. You can choose for the left-hand gauge or box to display consumption info or a gear indicator, a fuel gauge, assistance system info or operating temperatures. Uh, the right-hand dial or box can show driving time or average speed, navigation info, your audio preferences, your phone settings, speed, acceleration, a compass or destination info. Uh, when the virtual dials are in place, the central part of the screen can show things like the date, uh, trip computer data and road sign information. Anything this instrument binnacle display can't tell you, and much that it can, will be covered off by that 10-inch center dash touchscreen we mentioned earlier. Uh, this is a decent step forward from the composition media monitor that was fitted to the previous generation model. Uh, that already was better than rival setups. Now this replacement to discover media navigation system uh, puts this golf even further beyond its competitors reach in this regard uh, when it comes to clarity and ease of use. Uh, you'll have to get used to a few things about it though, uh, primarily the curious slider at the bottom of the screen for volume control, uh, not everyone likes that. If you hate that feature though, you'll be pleased to find that uh, rather more conventional volume buttons are provided on the steering wheel. Uh, the main centre screen menu allows you to choose from uh, key options like radio media, uh, phone, navigation, vehicle, app connect media and assist system sections. Uh, there's a built-in eSIM and that enables you to create a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can hold and drag display icons to move them around or you can swipe across to a split screen and that will enable you to, well, for example, display a sat-nav map, uh, Bluetooth, car info and phone settings all at the same time. There is also an online shop that will allow you to upgrade certain elements of this car's technology after you've bought it. Upgrade this monitor to extra cost to Discover Media Navigation Pro form and you'll also get gesture control, which we could do without, and the new Hello Volkswagen intuitive voice control system, what would you like to do? which we really like. With the voice setup, you preface anything you want to tell the car by either pressing on a steering wheel button or saying, the phrase I just mentioned, it's very sensitive. It then responds with either yes please or what would you like to do and reacts obediently to voice commands like uh, go to Milton Keynes, uh, activating navigation, or I'm cold, activating the air conditioning. What it can't do annoyingly is to enable you to alter key drive system features. Apparently the next generation hardware was signed off before the software engineers had properly perfected a way for the driver to be able to alter things like damping modes and safety system settings by voice. Now that is irritating because it means that you have to take your eyes off the road and delve around in system submenus to do that. Enough with screens and digitalization. Uh, what else do you need to know here? Apart from the fact that, as usual in the Golf, build quality is impeccable. Maybe that the ergonomics are predictably faultless too, and that the seats, which come with integrated headrests and lumbar adjustment, are brilliantly supportive. Uh, that smaller auto gear lever, that frees up space on the centre console for extra stowage too. 
On the subject of stowage, uh, there's a big air conditioned glove box. There are large door bins which can each hold a 500 ml bottle of water. Plus you get a lidded bin between the seats here. Uh, there's a neat touch in this central cup holder. Uh, it has an attachment that springs out to better clasp a smaller cup, although it does feel a bit flimsy. Plus there's a 12 volt socket nearby, uh, there's a ticket clip in the sun visor and there's a storage net in the front passenger footwell. Not everything's ideal though, uh, Volkswagen has forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment. Uh, there are no media ports in the bin between the seats and the ports that you do get above this recessed area in front of the gear stick are of the USB-C variety so you may have to use an unsightly converter lead. Still, for every tiny foible, there are two or three other features that you'll probably really like. Uh, maybe the way that the storage boxes are flock lined so that your keys don't scrape around on the move. Uh, the material used for the upper section of the dashboard, which is lovely to the touch. And the central armrest, which tops that bin between the seats here and which adjusts for five stages of height. The combination of these tiny front quarter lights here and slim A pillars mean good front wheel vision too. Over the shoulder vision, well that's not quite as good. Uh, the large C pillars rather get in the way, so it's just as well that rear parking sensors are standard fit. A rear view camera though isn't. So let's take a seat in the rear of this now five door only model. These large square rear door openings make it easy to get in and out without having to lower your head. Thanks to the extra 16 millimetres of length between the wheels with this Mark 8 design, there's a fraction more legroom than there was before, so a pair of six foot adults could now be accommodated reasonably here, uh, providing front seat occupants don't slide their seats fully back. There's certainly a little more space here than there would be in premium badged, family sized hot hatches outside of the VW Group, which a Golf GTI buyer might be considering, uh, like the BMW M135i or the Mercedes AMG A35. A Focus ST is more spacious though, and in a Skoda Octavia VRS, you get loads more room. As we said with the previous generation model, we're disappointed that the height of the central transmission tunnel makes it so difficult for middle seat passengers to be comfortably accommodated. Uh, two people will be quite happy though, and uh, they get the benefit of this fold down armrest here, which uh, also has a pair of integrated cup holders and twin beamed overhead reading lights as well. Uh, seat back pockets, they're provided, plus on each seat back you also get these neat couple of upper pouches too. The door bins, they're rather unimaginatively designed, but they do incorporate decently sized flock lined illuminated bins. There are twin USB ports, although again, they're of the smaller USB-C variety. And with a three zone climate system fitted as standard, you get this rear seat temperature control panel too. Let's finish off this segment by taking a look in the boot. Uh, the catch for which, as usual, is activated by pushing this central tailgate badge. Now your Volkswagen salesperson might reference the fact that this 381 litre space is 40 litres more than you'll get in a rival Ford Focus ST. They're less likely to point out that this Golf's capacity is still significantly down on what you'd find in a segment rival like Honda's Civic Type R and Skoda's Octavia VRS. Still, the room you do get is very usable and a small set of golf clubs or a baby buggy would easily fit. This is a very flexible area too thanks to this adjustable height boot floor which sits above the spare wheel compartment. That doesn't actually house a spare wheel though unless you pay extra for it. The wide hatch aperture and the low loading sill height also help if you're trying to get heavy or bulky items inside. Uh, there is a 12 volt socket and two bag hooks plus you get a cool white boot light. Uh, the small left and right storage compartments in the corners and a ski hatch so longer items can be pushed through into the cabin. There are four tie down points, but rather meanly, only the further two of those are chromed. It's a little disappointing given this Volkswagen's premium aspirations that you don't get the 40-20-40 rear seat back split that you'd find in a rival premium brand model. Uh, pushing forward the conventional 60-40 split rear bench uh, does give you a 1,237 litre load area, which will be virtually flat if you have the boot floor in its upper position.
There was a time when the GTI variant was so popular within the Golf range that it accounted for 12% of sales. But those days are long past, uh, not least because only this five-door body style is now on offer, which, from Volkswagen's point of view, does at least mean an absence of the need to constrain itself too much in terms of upfront pricing. Nor has it. From launch, uh, the manual version of this model commanded a sticker figure of around £33,500, with £1,500 more necessary to get the DSG Auto version. Add on the further £785 for the must-have DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control System, that we've referenced throughout this test, plus a few small options, and you're looking here at a £35,000 starting point pretty much any way you cut it. The more focused GTI Club Sport version of this model from launch required a budget of well over £37,000. You'd think a model badge Club Sport would be offered with manual transmission, but no, that one is auto only. Uh, the other GT badged Golf available is the GTD. Uh, that uses a 2-litre TDI diesel unit developing 200 PS, and that's paired to the DSG Auto gearbox. At the time of this test, uh, the GTD was priced at an almost identical level to this standard GTI. So again, think around £33,000. As for Golf GTI pricing as a whole, well, once, not too long ago, these were the kinds of figures that you'd have needed for the more potent Golf R. But things have moved on, and that top four-wheel drive variant now sits amongst more exalted super hatches at the £40,000 price point. For this standard GTI, the hot hatch competition comes from rival models that are merely very fast. Uh, some of the alternatives share pretty much exactly the same mechanicals as being used here, notably equivalent 2-litre, 245 PS versions of the Cupra Leon and the Skoda Octavia BRS, uh, which will both save you a couple of thousand pounds. Uh, there is also the Audi S3 Sportback. Now, that costs around £4,500 more, but it gets four-wheel drive, and it uses this car's 2-litre TSI engine in an uprated 310 PS state of tune. What about other brands? Well, a Honda Civic Type R, a Ford Focus ST, or a Renault Megane RS300 will all cost you around about the same as a Golf GTI. If you do want to pay less, a Hyundai i30N Performance, that's a car we really rate, would save you £3,000 or more over this Volkswagen. As for premium models, uh, well, a BMW M135i xDrive would cost around £3,000 more, while a Mercedes AMG A35 would cost around £5,000 more. But do bear in mind that both of those cars offer more power, um, automatic transmission, and also four-wheel drive as part of those prices. But there is nothing in this segment quite like a Golf GTI. And if you agree, uh, then you'll want to understand just how generous Volkswagen has been this time around with that all-important standard specification. So let's take a look. Uh, now, before we get on to the uh, GTI niceties, uh, we should start by covering off the key core features that all Mark 8 Golf models now get. Uh, I'm talking about things like full LED self-leveling headlights, adaptive cruise control, uh, climate control, air conditioning, and a wireless smartphone charging mat, plus rear parking sensors, a load-through ski hatch in the rear seat, and an adjustable height boot floor. Media provision across the range is taken care of by what Volkswagen calls its Digital Cockpit Pro. That's made up of two elements. There's a 10-inch high-resolution TFT dash instrument binnacle display with customizable menus and information, and a big 10-inch center dash touchscreen for the Discover Media Navigation Package. Now, that comes with satellite navigation, a six-speaker DAB audio system, and Bluetooth. This is permanently connected to the internet via an embedded eSIM, and that enables online music streaming and real-time traffic information, amongst other things. And it also allows for what Volkswagen calls an in-car shop, which allows you to purchase additional services over the air after you've bought the car. Plus, there's the CarNet App Connect system, which allows use of the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mirror link systems. Now, they enable you to mirror the display of your smartphone onto the center dash screen. 
Up to 14 driver profiles can be saved on the infotainment system. Uh, settings like radio stations, air conditioning, map and route preferences, they're all saved automatically uh, according to whoever is driving. Uh, there is also a WeConnect app available and that will allow you to uh, interact with your Golf GTI via your smartphone when you're away from it. Uh, you'll be able to do things like lock or unlock the doors, uh, remotely activate the horn and the indicators, get a vehicle status report, uh, set the cabin ventilation so that the car is cool or warm when you get into it. And uh, those remote services can also help you to locate your GTI if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. Talking of technology, there's a lot of standard driving tech too, uh, principally the ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control System, which incorporates predictive cruise control and uses images from a windscreen camera along with uh, navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speed restrictions. Plus, of course, uh, ACC can do all the usual things. It can adapt your golf speed to the vehicles in front of you. And in the event of a tailback, it can bring the car to a controlled stop and start it off again without driver input. Another clever new standard integrated feature is Car2X. And that's a system which communicates wirelessly with other Car2X enabled vehicles using Wi-Fi technology so as to share information and to brief your Golf's electronic systems automatically on traffic updates. So, for example, uh, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, the system will know before you do when the end of the jam is coming up and it'll get the adaptive cruise control system ready to resume cruising speeds. And Car2X also incorporates a hazard warning system. Uh, now that advises you of impending roadworks, uh, accidents and emergency vehicles. It can even detect when other cars with the system are performing panic braking in front of you. And in an emergency like that, it'll turn on your own brake lights even before you've reacted. And that'll help to avoid uh, a rear ending collision. Of course, this being a premium golf model, you'll want a few niceties, so you'll be pleased to find GTI spec is based on the generously provided for R-line trim level. That gives you lowered sport suspension, chromed exhaust pipes, rear privacy glass, heat for the steering wheel, uh, a progressive steering system, which makes low speed maneuvering much easier, and also the driver profile selection driving mode setup. Now that allows you to tweak steering and throttle feel to suit your mood uh, and gear change timings too if you have a DSG automatic model. There's also three zone climate control with rear passenger controls, a 30 color cabin ambient lighting system and an LED light strip across the radiator grille which creates a continuous illumination with the headlights. Onto the GTI specific features, uh, you get a GTI styling pack which gives you GTI design front and rear bumpers and honeycomb front air intake. There's also Richmond style 18 inch alloy wheels with red brake calipers and LED front fog lights set in a honeycomb front air intake. Uh, LED rear tail lamps too with sequential indicators, keyless entry, power folding mirrors and a front differential lock for extra cornering traction. You'll also get the brand's piercing IQ light LED matrix system for the headlamps. That enables them to alter their beam via 22 separate LED lights, which draw from GPS data, steering wheel angle, and driving speed info. And they can alter their illumination based on the kind of road you're on and the prevailing weather. Inside a Golf GTI, you'll get sport seats in Jakara red cloth, an aluminium trimmed gear knob, black metal chrome decorative inserts in the dash and the front door panels and a heated leather trimmed uh, three spoke multifunction capacitive branded steering wheel with touch sensitive buttons. The GTI Club Sport model as you'd expect gets its own bespoke specification in addition to the standard GTI features. Now that gives you a performance braking system, flared side skirts, a front splitter for increased downforce and a gloss black two-part performance rear spoiler to reduce high speed lift. Uh, there are also unique GTI Club Sport decals on the lower edges of the door panel and you get a special black GTI Club Sport rear diffuser too as part of a styling pack that gives you GTI Club Sport designed front and rear bumpers and twin oval chrome exhaust tailpipes. 
Inside, there are GTI Club Sport decorative inserts on the dash and front door panels and red contrast stitching with Art Velour microfleece trimming for the GTI Club Sport sports seats. Enough on standard spec levels. What about options for your Golf GTI? Well, your starting point here should be the DCC Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Damping System that we referenced earlier on. Uh, it's a really significant feature if you're going to get the best from the drive dynamics of this car. Uh, the 19-inch wheel upgrade option is another common box that GTI customers will tend to tick. Uh, there is a choice of Adelaide or Estoril black diamond turned rims. Here we also have fitted the head-up display, uh, the digital key feature, which will enable you to unlock the car with your smartphone, and a winter pack, which gives you heated front seats and heated windscreen washer jets too. Plus, heated rear seats can also be included. If this was our car and our budget was flexible, we'd also want to look at adding Vienna full leather upholstery and also Volkswagen's new audio system upgrade, a 480 watt nine speaker Harman Kardon premium sound setup. Other features you may want to add include a park assist system that will automatically steer you into a space and a panoramic glass roof. Your Volkswagen dealer is also going to be keen for you to consider upgrading the 10 inch center dash discover media navigation system to improved Pro status, which gets you integrated gesture control, and perhaps most notably, the Wolfsburg brand's intuitive voice activation system. Now, this can recognize common commands prefaced by the phrase, hello, Volkswagen. Uh, the Discover Media Navigation Pro option also includes what Volkswagen calls WeConnect Plus preparation. That makes it possible to integrate online traffic information into route guidance and to transfer online points of interest into the navigation system. WeConnect Plus media services also deliver online access to a range of useful information like traffic reports, petrol station locations and parking spots. Bear in mind that you'll almost certainly be paying your Volkswagen dealer more for your choice of paint colour. Solid pure white is the only standard shade, so you're probably going to want to fork out for one of the metallic or pearl effect shades. Or if you want to splash out in a big way, then there's the pricey premium signature finish Oryx White, and we've got that here. What about practical options? Well, as you expect, you can specify a tow bar and of course you can add in roof bars so that roof boxes and holders for bikes, skis and snowboards can be installed on top. A bike carrier can be added into the tow bar and mud flaps are of course available too. For the boot area, you might want to add in a reversible luggage compartment mat or perhaps a luggage compartment tray or a load liner or perhaps a luggage compartment net to keep small items from flying around. Annoyingly, you have to pay extra for a space saver spare wheel though. Enough with options, let's take a look at driver assist systems and safety provision. You'd expect some sort of autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Volkswagen's is called front assist and as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. For this Mark 8 Golf GTI, this set's uh, city emergency braking system has been enhanced with predictive pedestrian protection, which is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be about to inadvertently step into your path. If that sort of situation happens, or if, for example, another driver suddenly brakes in front of you, then further help is provided by a Swerve Support Emergency Steering Assist system, which is automatically activated as soon as you have to avoid an obstacle. After visual and acoustic warnings, this will introduce targeted braking intervention from the assistance system, which will help to stabilise the car if you have to perform an evasive manoeuvre. Also now standard on a Golf GTI is a bit of technology that Volkswagen is very proud of. It's travel assist setup, which enables so-called level two autonomous driving at high speeds. 
This is a camera and radar sensor controlled assistance system which will autonomously accelerate, brake and steer your Golf while maintaining a safe distance to the vehicles ahead. It's basically a development of the previous traffic jam assist system which could accelerate, brake, steer and maintain distance to the vehicles ahead. But whereas that previous automatic longitudinal and lateral guidance system could only be used at up to 37 miles an hour, Travel Assist can almost completely control the car for you at speeds of up to 130 mph, providing you keep your hands on that new capacitive steering wheel. Uh, if you have a Golf GTI with a DSG automatic gearbox, then your Travel Assist pack will also include a clever emergency assist setup. Now that can take over driving duties completely uh, if you become incapacitated and it will steer the car to the side of the road and bring it to a safe and controlled stop. Like every Golf, this one also gets a lane assist, lane keeping system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. Uh, in addition, there is distance display warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to that vehicle in front of you. Plus, you also get traffic sign recognition. Now, that will picture road signs as you pass them and then display them on the centre dash screen. All of that is in addition to all the more usual features which come fitted right across the Golf range and they have helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. Uh, there are twin front side and curtain airbags, although disappointingly you don't also get one to uh, protect the driver's knees. There are also of course ice fix child seat fastenings on the rear bench. Plus, there's an active bonnet, a sensor-controlled pedestrian protection system which raises the bonnet away from the engine compartment in the nightmare scenario of an impact with a pedestrian, and that's to reduce injuries. We also like the inclusion of an automatic post-collision braking system. Uh, now, that recognises when an impact has occurred and it brakes the car to prevent it from being uncontrollably propelled into the oncoming traffic. It's also worth mentioning that uh, one of the features of the We Connect app that we mentioned earlier, that's an emergency e-call uh, SOS system, which in the event of an accident where the airbags have been triggered, uh, will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus MSR engine braking control, and that'll stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you to steer out of it, and you get an ABS braking system that's further assisted by CBC cornering brake control through the bends plus an HBA, Hydraulic Braking Assistant, which helps to reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus, all Golfs get a hill hold function, and that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Plus, there's tyre pressure monitoring and a driver alert system, which will warn you if the sensors detect drowsiness. Further safety options include a side airbag system for front and rear passengers, and what Volkswagen calls proactive occupant protection which uses sensors from the front assist setup to prepare the car to help you survive an impact if those sensors deem a collision is inevitable. That'll mean that the seat belts will be instantly pre-tensioned while the windows and the sunroof if it's fitted will be immediately closed. It's all very reassuring. All future Golf GTI models will be electrified in some way. Uh, frankly, we're a bit surprised that this eighth generation version isn't. Uh, the Volkswagen Group, after all, does have quite a variety of engines in its portfolio, which are embellished by mild hybrid tech, but there's no sign of that here. Still, the relatively light weight of the MQB chassis does more than a tiny dose of electrification could to drive running costs down, even if the curb weight these days can of course get nowhere near the super light 810 kilo figure of the 70s Mark I original, which was the key to its cheeky chuckability. Still, tipping the scales at over 100 kilos less than some direct competitors does no harm at all to the official fuel and CO2 stats, as the WLTP figures demonstrate. 
both manual and auto versions of this GTI manage up to 38.2 mpg on the combined cycle as does the auto only GTI Club Sport variant. As for emissions, this GTI DSG uh, delivers up to 168 grams per kilometre of CO2. It's 169 grams for the manual. The GTI Club Sport manages 167 grams per kilometre. The DSG Auto Gearbox's integrated coasting function helps quite a lot in keeping those efficiency readings of the auto variants close to those of the manual. The competition, which can't offer mild hybrid tech in this segment either, flounders a bit when trying to match those figures. A Honda Civic Type R manages 33.2 mpg and the CO2 reading is 178 grams per kilometre. A Ford Focus ST EcoBoost manages 35.3 mpg and 183 grams per kilometre. A Hyundai i30N Performance manages 34 miles per gallon and 188 grams per kilometre and a Renault Megane RS300 delivers 35.8 miles per gallon on the WLTP combined cycle but a smoky 191 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you do need to achieve more efficient returns than is possible from this Golf GTI but you want to keep just about everything this model can offer then your dealer will draw your attention to the diesel powered Golf GTD which looks virtually identical and uses a 200 PS 2 litre TDI engine and it's capable of 62 in 7.1 seconds. When driven more gently the GTD can manage up to 54.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 137 grams per kilometre of CO2. What else? Well, uh, whatever Golf GT variant you select, you can monitor its ongoing frugality via selectable consumption readouts on the left-hand side of the digital instrument binnacle screen or via the vehicle section of the centre dash screen where you can select since start, uh, long term and since refuel readouts on economy. Servicing, well as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year and with that uh, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles though and this Golf will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys uh, then you'll be able to work with the flexible regime and that will see you travelling up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years whichever is sooner. What else? Well, we like the fact that mist fueling protection is standard across the range, so you won't be able to accidentally put diesel in your GTI. A less impressive is the three year 60,000 mile warranty cover. Uh, Volkswagen offers a 100,000 mile cover on its vans, but providing that on its cars wouldn't, of course, give the dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. Uh, there's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world, in your Golf GTI, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance, and that has no mileage limit. Uh, the paint won't warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this car is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. As usual with the Golf, you can expect some of the highest residuals available in the class. And finally, the insurance for both GTI and GTI Club Sport is rated at Group 28E. Will we ever see a Golf GTI quite like this one ever again? Well, with performance models increasingly adopting various forms of electrification, we probably won't, so let's enjoy this eighth generation model while we can. It's the most sophisticated Golf GTI yet, but also, impressively, in some ways, it's the one that best replicates the agile, effervescent style of the 70s original. When that Mark I Golf GTI was first launched in 1976, Volkswagen wondered whether it would struggle to sell the early production run of 5,000 vehicles. Today, over 2.3 million sales later, the issue isn't whether this car will sell, but who will buy it? After all, in recent generations, this model has mainly sold to folk who, if they were honest, would probably admit to having outgrown the shopping rocket genre it originally created. In eighth generation form, this car needed to return a little to its roots and add an old fashioned dose of fun into that mature mix. Has it done that? 
Well, you might not know it from the statute figures in all the dynamic measures that tend to matter to hot hatch drivers, 0 to 60 acceleration, top speed, lap times, lateral grip, braking performance and so on. This Golf never really bothers the class best in a serious manner. You might not be immediately arrested by the looks either or by the initial experience on the drive around the block, but persevere. Nearly half a century of experience in creating a car of this kind has to count for something, and it does. Importantly, unlike some of its rivals, Wolfsburg hasn't made the mistake of developing this GTI for the track rather than the road, so bumpy British tarmac doesn't bother it. You're always confident in pushing the performance envelope in a way that very few rivals can match. Yet, that is possible without the sweaty palms which usually characterise red mist motoring. The Mark V, the Mark VI and the Mark VII Golf GTR models were also accomplished in this way, but with its sharper steering, its stiffer setup, its better traction and more tunable responses, this Mark VIII version can not only be a confident performance car, but a credibly exciting one too. So yes, it should sell to folk who want a proper hot hatch experience, as well as a very mature one. The very first generation version set out to define a fundamental standard for performance that was more precise than any other compact car. So it is here. Long after the novelty of some rivals has worn off, this GTI will always feel a class act. Crucially though, it'll now also be a very entertaining one.